All right, Ashton asks, let's say you have the body of Hitler and the mind you have right now. It's 1933, and your Nazi party has taken power, and then the Reichstag just burned down, and, and you, as Hitler, got absolute power. What are you doing differently to get Germany out of economic ruin? Wow, that's a bizarre question. Um, I mean, I wouldn't be... None of that could have happened, right? None of, all of that is an impossibility because if I had my mind, it doesn't matter what body I have, I wouldn't be taking power. I, I wouldn't have taken power. I wouldn't be taking power. I wouldn't give those speeches. I wouldn't be popular. I, I, I you know, nothing would have happened, right? Um, Action Jackson says, I would resign, right? <laughs> but I think your question is, can you get the, econ the economy going without becoming a fascist? And the answer is absolutely yes. I mean, you do exactly what I would do in any country. And I don't know in detail the structure of the German economy in 1933. But basically, I would uh, put the, um, the uh, German currency on a gold standard. I would, uh, you know, cut. Do you remember, Germany is the original welfare state. Germany is the first welfare state. Uh, Germany, uh, you know, had a lot of controls over its business, controls over its industry. I would get rid of all controls. I would start phasing out all welfare. And I would encourage entrepreneurship. Not encourage them, but encourage them in my speeches, in my, you know, I would encourage people to become entrepreneurs, to create jobs, to build businesses, to hire people. Um, so I would do the exact opposite of Hitler, which was to, uh, increase controls, increase regulations, and build up a war machine. I would take apart whatever war machine I had. Producing, producing weapons is counterproductive. You know, once I, I made Germany rich, I would build weapons to protect myself from the Soviets. But 1933, I don't think the Soviets were a threat. So don't build weapons, just allow markets to work. I would basically free up the German economy, it's just like I would have freed up the U.S. economy when the, you know, in 1933 to get out of the Great Depression, the exact opposite of what FDR did. Um, uh, James Taylor says, one of the reasons the Germans got as far as they did was because they were motivated by national pride after losing World War I so badly, they wanted to make a comeback, whereas the Russian army is invading their little brother. Yeah, but Germany didn't get very far. I mean, very far in what? In, in, in conquest that then got beaten back, in, in, in taking over a few countries for a few years, but in the, in the vast scope of history, uh, you know, Germany was, was beaten into pulp in, in you know, five years. Five, a little bit more than that, five and a half years. It was beaten into a pulp. It lost massively. Uh, there's no question that, that um, so Germany wasn't a success in any respect. There's no dimension in which you could say Nazi Germany was a success. Now, they succeeded militarily for a while, for lots of reasons. They had, at the time, at the beginning of the war, they had the best equipment, military equipment in the world. The Russians at the beginning of the war have some of the worst equ military equipment in the world. Um, the, the, the Germans at the time, there was a certain uh, nationalistic, uh, you know, motivation and winning feeds and winning. So. If, if, if Germany had not succeeded with the Blitzkrieg, if they had actually failed in their initial attempts, they would have collapsed immediately. They would not have been, they would have been like Russia today. They would have not, they couldn't sustain a war long term. Morale wouldn't have sustained. What sustained morale was that they looked like they were winning for a long time. Um, the, the, the Germans had good generals. Um, some good generals, anyway, like um, 
the guy from North Africa who la later was in France. But um, I don't know, uh, you know, how much uh, the soldier in the in in the tank and in the and it was, uh, you know, they there was a certain nationalist pride that was drilled into them that drove them to success. Rommel, thank you, uh, that drove them to to be motivated. But you know, the motivation was shallow in the end because they didn't really believe in what Hitler believed in. They, or at least a lot of them didn't. And to the extent that they did, that belief was irrational and didn't sustain them. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content, and of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are ready subscribers and those of you who are ready supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.